Our next speaker is Octavia Ferguson. She is currently working on her master's at the University of Georgia. For interesting fact-wise, she enjoys watching Disney movies, traveling, um, um, excuse me, travel, nationally advocating, and eating food. Her idea to spark change in the world is using creative activities to teach youth with behavioral problems. Please welcome Octavia. Thank you very much. I was just really thinking about how it's probably not best for me to go in directly into my speech because I'm so nervous. So I was trying to figure out a way, like as I was sitting down, to reduce my anxiety. So I was thinking about taking off my glasses so I can't see you all. <laughs> <laughs> but I really can't see. So I was just thinking about, um, like my boyfriend, he has this phrase to kind of um, describe my clumsiness, and he calls it like Tay Tay proof. And I was just thinking, like, that's not Tay Tay proof at all. Like, I would have knocked down the bugs, it would have been a whole mess. So I was just like, I'll just deal with it. So um, Paul Torrance, an American psychologist known primarily for his work on creativity, observed creative individuals to be altruistic, energetic, persistent, independent in thinking and judgment, radical, stubborn, and disturbed by organization. Paul Torrance devoted about 50 years of his life to the research of creativity, and many other people agree that these are strengths of creative people, but not many people recognize these strengths in children with ADHD. I remember my eighth birthday party. My mom threw the biggest water fight ever. There was water balloons, water guns, water bottles, water hoses, it didn't matter. Whatever could get you wet, we were using it. It looked like a big rain cloud just burst over our apartment afterwards. We literally had to sweep all the water out the apartment. It was just so much water. It was so much fun. Like me and my little sister, we combined our birthdays and we really enjoyed it. Another childhood memory is the food fights we used to have in our house. They always happened towards the end of the month, but at least one day out that last week, the kitchen walls will be decorated with ketchup, mustard, mayo, flour, and beans. Until this day, I cannot think of anyone who could play a game of hide and seek as well as my mom. She would get us kids together, I'm the oldest of six, invite my cousins, it's like six of them, and the neighborhood kids would come over as well, and she'll start off with a scary story. She told the best scary stories ever. And afterwards, you know, she would go outside, take the hanger out the breaker box, and the game would begin. It would be so dark and scared that you would want to partner up with someone because if you was by yourself, it was very likely that you would kind of like whimper a little bit and get caught. We used to have so much fun. And honestly, it was great, but it wasn't as great as it seemed. I seen some of y'all look confused, like, what? Hanger, breaker box, what's that about? So yeah, my mom, she, again, you know, um, she found a way to turn the lights back on illegally, and that was, that's the way that it was. And the food fights, well, they always happened towards the end of the month because that's when all the food stamps ran out, and that was typically our way of kind of celebrating that we were about to have food for the next week coming. And the water fight, that birthday, well, all we could really afford was water, and that was because we didn't have a water bill. We didn't have much, but my mom had made what we did have great. She was creative. Any child in the presence of my mom was a child affected by creativity. But sometimes her creativity wasn't used for positive, and sometimes no matter how creative she would get, she just couldn't make things right. And I guess that's how we ended up in foster care. Now, once in foster care, we were still my mother's children. We wanted to have fun. We, went, we ran, laughed, screamed, created, destroyed, fought. The people of the system were not familiar with the way that we had fun. At this time, my foster mom really didn't know us that well, so she couldn't advocate for us. Attempts to have fun increased as we tried to escape horrid realities, hold on to the memories of our past, and really try to stay connected with our mother. What we thought was fun, many other people saw as behavior problems. What was once normal in my mother's house was now abnormal, and in foster care, you're treated for abnormal behavior. So again, what we considered fun these new group of people that enter our lives once we enter foster care, the new teachers, counselors, behavior aides, therapists, psychologists, psychiatrists, and everybody else really pretty much perceived this ADHD. It was clear for them, one, our energy was entirely too high. Two, we weren't hearing anything they were saying. And three, our behaviors were just so aggressive. I was older and I understood impulse control. It could have been a result of my age, or the matter of the fact that my mother taught me to raise, raise me to raise my siblings. 
I yearned for that physical release and, and stimulation that we received from my mother house, but I also enjoyed learning. I could sit down long enough to obtain information and show that I obtained that information, but some of my siblings struggled with that. As a result, they were given psychotropic medication, Adderall, Respiral, Vyvanse, Seroquel. These medications were given to them to help them focus by suppressing their behavior problems. Now, I have so many issues about how the medicine was given to them. One, the amount given to them. Two, the quality of services or the lack of quality service offered with the medication. Three, how did they even decide that the medication was needed? The bigger problem, however, is the fact that these children's lives were put at risk for the sake, with, with the sake of chemical manipulation. I'm not a supporter of medication, though I do recognize that the benefit that it has for many people. However, the harm screamed out to me, weight gain, diabetes, suicidal thoughts, addiction. But what bothers me the most is the fact that the energy reduced, the medication reduces energy. Energy is power, energy is life. A reduction in energy is a reduction in life, and I don't feel like anyone's life should be reduced. When the medication was offered to me and given to some of my siblings, and even more of my siblings and foster, my sisters and brother in foster care, I wondered, did the professionals take in consideration that perhaps they were not communicating effectively with us? Did they take in consideration that we just really needed to release that energy that we had? Was, did they even consider that perhaps their teaching methods just sucked and they were plain old boring and that's why no one was paying attention? Yeah. Youth in foster care are three to five times more likely to receive medication for behavior problems. This same population is three to 10 more likely to receive a mental health diagnosis. And once in foster care, many of these youth are placed on multiple medications at one time. This is a population that has experienced extreme traumatic events. I remember when I was placed in care, I was lonely, I was scared, and I was angry. All I wanted to do was get back home with my mother. However, medication is not the solution. Now, I've always been a rebel. Call me bad, recalcitrant, revolutionary, whatever. But since I've heard of the use of psychotropic medications once placed in foster care, I've rebelled against them. I can't, again, I understand the benefit, but I can't help to see how this medication is pinning us kids, our children, and the future down for the sake of control. At an early age, I joined many organizations advocating, attempting to reduce the amount of psychotropic drugs given to foster youth in adjudicated teens. But perhaps it's the ADHD in me that had to be active and do more than just advocate. I needed to provide an alternative. My inspiration came from my mother. My mother house was a place for physical release. There was always an option and opportunity to release any pent up energy that we had. I remember that clearly, and I made sure I applied it to my occupational goals. I'm working on creating my alternative education energy transference center. Now, my mentor, Albert Einstein, really paved the path for me when he said, everyone is a genius. But if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will spend its whole life feeling like it's stupid. I also like to remind you that energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but only transformed into one form or another. I received my Bachelor's of Arts in Psychology at Spelman College, and I'm now working on my Master's of Education in the Gifted and Creative Education program at the University of Georgia. In addition to the time that I've spent in care, my studies revealed to me that there are better ways of dealing with behavior problems than using chemical manipulation. My center will be technology-driven. Technology provides the stimulation necessary to capture the attention of the youth nowadays. My, my center will be heavily based in physical release. It will include a dance studio, a football field, ecotherapy. The youth will be expected to overcome physical obstacles in an effort to understand the connection with overcoming social and emotional obstacles as well. The center exists, my center exists to empower youth with behavior problems that may affect their learning by providing them the opportunity to release their energy a safe place to express themselves and learn how to communicate, teaching them ways that align with their preference, and therapy and therapeutic measures to teach coping mechanisms. Aristotle said that the energy of the mind is the essence of life, and I too believe that there is nothing wrong with America that faith, the love of freedom, intelligence, and the energy of her citizens cannot cure. However, 
the start is to recognize that energy the children hold as greatness. That energy should be developed, not suppressed by drugs. And please, people, look past the labels that us foster youth have and recognize that we too are great. One of our greatness is our creativity. Difference does not equate to less than, and the medication does not add to us. Thank you. <laughs>